how this is organized around the theme questions. The who, the how, the why, and the why now. You know, we really should contact the masterclass people about this. What is up, Nerd Detectives? Welcome back to another episode of Nerds at Night. I am your host, Blake Money Blakeweather, the world's most okayest detective. And I'm so glad to be back with y'all for week five to solve the case and talk all about... We're at the midway point now, y'all, and things are heating up. Lots of clues, lots of suspects, and a lot more questions we don't have answers to yet. So if y'all tuned in before, y'all know how this works. And if you haven't, welcome all my fellow Jack Jonks. First, we're going to go over our rules for solving a murder mystery. Then we're going to do a quick recap. We're going to go over some comments. And then finally, we are going to go over our suspect board. But let me stop rambling and let's get right to it. Now let's talk about our rules for solving a murder mystery because we know murder mysteries work in a certain way and we have our own certain way of cracking that code. So what are these rules? Well, rule number one, you got to have suspects. Rule number two, you got to have clues. Rule number three, you got to have motivation. Rule number four, you have to have opportunity. And always rule number five, you have to have red herrings. We use all of these rules to solve any murder mystery, whether it's a show or a movie. Now with these rules in mind, let's recap this week's episode and see where we can apply our rules. So grab a coffee, grab a beer, grab a whiskey, and let us begin. We begin the episode with Marshall narrating and us getting a glimpse into his life wearing a fake beard and glasses. We see his journey to getting a script green lit. Back at the shack, the crew faces an armed Bev Mellon. Bev realizes who she was aiming at and calms down. She thinks the gun is not loaded, but she thought wrong. The crew takes the gun from her and asks her why she's there and if she killed Saz. She says she didn't kill Saz, but thinks someone in the movie crew might have. They ask where Bev was the night Saz was murdered, and she says she was at a party in LA. She also says she got a voicemail from Saz and made Mabel notices it came in at 11.07. The crew gets the gun back to Williams and they try to let her know about the latest info they know. After the crew gets their movie checks, Mabel struggles with her identity as a podcast producer. The crew decides to look for more suspects upstairs at the production office apartment. They go upstairs and get invited to do a photo shoot later on with the rest of the actors. Bev Mellon teases Oliver about Loretta's new Jonky co-star, and Charles and Mabel find out there's tacky mat on the ground to keep the dust out of the work area. And oh yeah, Howard is an assistant on the set. Mabel and Charles sneak around the set and Charles uses an obvious phone bit to take photos of the crew and the work area. As they look around the room for suspects, they see Marshall is a bit nervous. The crew asks to speak with Marshall and he's relieved when he finds out it's about the case and not about the movie. Charles and Oliver take Marshall upstairs and Bev intercepts Mabel and approaches her about other podcast ideas she might have. Glenn drops off a gift to Charles and the crew gets to work on interrogating Marshall. Charles starts by complimenting the script while Oliver is not too happy with how he was written. Marshall informs the group the night Saz died, he was in LA doing a comedy set. Mabel asks Marshall if he's wearing a fake beard and Marshall admits he is. He also admits to wearing fake glasses even though he has 20-10 vision. He admits to having imposter syndrome and praises the podcast group for all the work they do and for inspiring him. Charles offers to go over the murder board and all the information they have so far. Marshall has a question about the timing of Saz's last call compared to when the incinerator power surge happened. He questions if 12 minutes was really enough time for one person to commit the crime. Charles says he can break down how the crime happened in 12 minutes. He then proceeds to go through an exaggerated imaginary theatrical version of how the crime could have played out. Marshall still has questions about the timeline and insinuates that someone in good shape would have to do it. Oliver, trying to prove that he's more athletic than Loretta's co-star, volunteers to do the 12-minute reenactment. He starts off okay, only to be interrupted by John McEnroe. Oliver completes the trek in 38 minutes and seems slightly frustrated for not finishing in under 12. Mabel says they have to get ready to go to the photo shoot because one of the photos of the footprints from the tacky mat matches the footprint they found in the Dudenoff apartment. They go to the photo shoot and become overwhelmed by the double-double versions of themselves. The crew takes a few photos and with the assistance of Howard and Eva, create a plan to lay out tacky mats to track the footprint once again. Oliver is called to take more photos in odd poses and Charles figures out there would have to be two people involved in the murders. Charles tells Mabel the two-man theory and they scan the room for suspects. Mabel sees the footprint she's been looking for and it seemingly matches Tawny Brothers' shoes. Mabel is now convinced it was her brother's sisters who could have pulled off the attack. As they look back, Tawny Brother is missing on the set and we hear a gunshot with a fade to black and Howard saying, oh my god, they've been shot. Now there was so much that happened in that last seven minutes, so as we sort of reel in from the excitement. Let me go over some of the things that stood out to me. Let's talk about why Bev is in the shed in the first place. We know she was in LA for a party and didn't kill Saz, but the question still lingers, how did she know about the trampoline park? And even though she was in LA at the time of the murder, could she still have masterminded the killing? Moving on, let's talk about Marshall and his fake beard. We know he tries to keep it a good secret, but was this comment meant toward Marshall? Ah, when'd you grow the beard, Lassie? That's not Mabel. 
Oh, has Glenn met him before without facial hair? And is this alibi tight? The truth is, I've been trying my hand at stand-up, observational stuff. That night I was in West Hollywood doing a set at the Lafeteria. Looking up comedy places in LA, it doesn't seem like Lafeteria is a real place. Now, is this just a made up name for the show, which it definitely could be, or is this just a made up name for his alibi? Next, what's up with the big briefcase the brother sisters have? Is it housing the sniper rifle that was used in the killing? Or is it holding something else inside that has nothing to do with the murder? Speaking of brother sisters, let's talk about the footprint and their shoes. Let's look closely at the print and closely at the shoe. If we notice closely, the gap in the shoe print doesn't match up quite properly with the real shoe. The real shoe seems to have a larger gap from the middle of the shoe to the bottom, thus telling us likely it is not one of the brother sisters who were the shooters. At least not Tawny. But whose footprints are these? And who is still our mysterious killer? Speaking of killer, who was the person who was shot at the end of this episode? And who did it? You see, we have a limited number of suspects who could either be the shooter on the set or could be the victim. We know Howard, Zach, Oliver, Glenn, Trina Brothers, Mabel, and Charles are all around each other once the shot is fired. So who is unaccounted for that we've seen in this episode? There's Tawny Brothers, Marshall, Eugene, Eva, and Bev Mellon. Now I think we can take a guess that one of them will be the victim. But the bigger question is which one of them is the shooter. Next, I have a question about the timing of Saz's murder. You see, in season three, we see Saz was shot while the crew was still down at the rap party. The next we see of them, they're wrapping up a podcast. See, timing-wise, they were downstairs when Saz is shot, which Charles estimated at 11.08. And they are also in the middle of recording the end of their show at 11.19. So let's think about this for a second. It would have taken a minute or two to get to Oliver's apartment and another minute or two to set up the equipment. Either the crew was only recording something like the end of their show, which would be less than five minutes, or there was a bit of a continuity error from the writers. These next two points are less clues and more of Easter eggs. The first is the phone bit that Charles uses to try and take pictures of the cast and crew while in the production office. Is this a nod to Steve Martin in the movie Bowfinger? You see, Bowfinger is a 1999 comedy written and directed by Steve Martin. I'm not going to give away the plot, but in the movie, there is a scene where he uses a broken phone as a gag to make him seem like more of an important director in front of Robert Downey Jr.'s character, who is a famous producer. Hey, Jerry, how are you? Bobby Bowfinger, Bowfinger yeah, Films. Right. We worked together on that thing, you know, a couple of years ago what the, 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 uh, the famous movie can I, can I talk to Kit absolutely yeah. Kit hey Kit got a surprise for you Kit Kit I'm losing you. If you haven't seen this movie, you have to check it out. Also, as for the Robert Maplethorpe photo Lester says he was in. Reminds me of the time I modeled for the uh, great Robert Maplethorpe. Of course, you won't recognize me behind the gimp mask, but uh, it's me in there. It's likely this one. Just FYI, this is an actual real photo taken by Robert Maplethorpe. Those are all the things that stood out to me, but let me know what things stood out to you, whether it was a big thing, a small thing, or some new theory that you have after this episode ended. And again, speaking of y'all's thoughts, I know I say it every week, but last week you guys wrote so many comments. It was the most commented episode that we've had all season. So all I want to say is, I know I, I know I do this all the time, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. It's so awesome to interact with all of y'all across all the comments. And it's always so great hearing what you have to say. So you know what time it is. We're about to dig into you guys' comments. But just as a heads up, I'm only going to read a few of them on this week's episode. And then in the coming days, I'm going to release another video where I read a lot more comments from this week's video and last week's video. So if you don't hear your comment read tonight, no biggie. Look out for that video about two or three days after this one drops. As for now, though, let's get right into the comments we had from last week. Our first comment comes in from Amber Prince. My current theory is Saz faked her death. She wanted to get out of her relationship with Jan and she knew that if she left her, Jan would kill Charles. Jan even said she was what was stopping her. I also think Saz is dude enough. Charles talks about in episode two that no one would know her except from the interview. Joe said he hadn't met her. Someone's face is scratched out in the picture. It has to be someone we know because there would be no reason to mark out the face if it wasn't. Yeah, that's a it's a great theory. I've been getting a lot in the comments that Saz is dude enough. And and it could make sense, right? Um, it absolutely could make sense in 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 some the show would make it make sense, right? But it could make sense as to like, oh, that's why Joe doesn't know who Saz is because he knows her as Dudenoff, right? I still think Dudenoff is is a is a guy, but you know, in this theory, you know, maybe it maybe it is Saz, maybe it is her face that's scratched out, and maybe she is Dudenoff. That's an interesting theory. I want a little bit more information on it, but um, I have been hearing that's like a hot thing. That's like what that's, that's that hotness that's going out in the street. So. I'm not mad at it. Let's see if we get some more information that does 
indicate one way or another. Next comment comes in from Scooter1983. The time Saz was cremated is when the power went off. Maybe that will come back as a clue later. So funny you said that because it came back as a clue in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> we now have a time that indicates when that all happened. It's 1119. So it came back as a major clue of this whole timeline plot point that Charles has. And yeah, it's a it's a big clue. And I think it's only going to be bigger as we start to figure out the rest of the pieces. Now that we have this idea that two killers are involved, which can we just say we've been known, we have been known on the show that two killers have been involved so we we did a great job there it was the only thing that made sense right but yeah it is a major clue especially when we added into all of the timeline that we have currently so yeah great call out right there scooter our next clue comes in from larry wade 166 i'm still struggling with why you would shoot from across the towers when you had access to the apartment it tells me that at least two people due to no blood trail from the dragging either way red would be everywhere from a gsw in real life also Tap in looked like it was written in a bingo marker. <laughs> That's so funny. Again, two people. We're, we, people were catching on to this even before it was revealed. Even if they never told us until the last episode, we all we all knew. There's no way. There is no way one person would would be able to do that, right? There's no way one person would be able to go from here. All this episode did was just prove the theory that I've been saying since day one. And it's so funny. The tap in was written with a bingo marker. It just looked too neat. It looked too neat, didn't it? Like it was like set up. I don't know if based on how we saw Saz but right before she died, like she could barely like get her finger and like do a little like that. And I don't know. She had enough strength to just write that, right? Just write it down. Just write it right on tap in, right? When you're, you're dying, you're dying. Just write it down. Oh, it looked too neat. I think it would look a little bit like a little bit more jumbly. I don't know. I don't know. But it does look a little too neat. Our next comment comes in from Ashley Mims Askew, 4851. Heard on another video theory that tinsel is actually fire tape. It's the most convincing explanation I've seen so far. It absolutely could be. I, it absolutely could be. I heard that on another theory video. Um, but I, I don't know. Like, does it look like that? And and isn't tape, like, doesn't, wouldn't tape stick? It didn't look like this was sticky. And I know even if you have old tape, like no, if you have a piece of old tape, it's still slightly like a little adhesive -y on the side that's just been mangled and wrangled up. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I'm still going with like uh some sort of like party decor or like a ribbon, right? Like that ha has anybody burned? Did anybody burn anything? Did you burn ribbon? If you burned ribbon, please write it in the comments. It hey, I burned some ribbon. It can't be ribbon because it burns like, or it can be ribbon because it did not burn. Let me know. Let me know in the comments so we can narrow this down before the final five episodes. Our next comment comes in from Sherry7054. Wouldn't that be cool if the brother sisters does train Howard to be a better actor? They give him confidence to be a star. Well, it's kind of funny that you say that. They're not training him to be an actor, but he is an assistant. He is on the movie. He is working. He's doing a lot more for them than he is for the podcast crew, which I think he's a little salty about, but... um. So funny that you say that because we got to see how that got to play out right now. What if they do that in the future? They could do that in the future, right? Everybody starts as an assistant, then you get to be a famous actor or something. Let's keep the let's keep the dream alive for Howard because it still could be a thing. Our last comment comes from Dan underscore two five eight four. I've never asked you about your silk scarf. I'm assuming that's an ode to Mr. Putnam. I think Bev was at Saz Trampoline Park because they were together. Saz only told Charles about the park and told him to keep it a secret. I also think she told Bev since they were together. The Paul Rudd cameo went on about ten minutes too long, but it was a good episode. So let's do this in pieces. The first question was about the silk scarf. Actually, this is an ode to. Uh, Mandy Patinkin's character in Death and Other Details. I forget his name in that show, but his character wears glasses and wore a silk scarf. I started doing it probably like I was like, if anybody remembers, maybe I was like five episodes. I was like halfway into the season and I started wearing the scarf and the glasses. I just thought it would be a fun little ode to the character. And now that we have Oliver, uh, it kind of makes, it makes sense that I can just wear a scarf and you're like, yeah, he's wearing a scarf because Oliver, whatever. But uh <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of the basis of, of how uh, I started this whole little ensemble getup. So, so yeah, good question right there. And then thinking Saz and Bev were together, it doesn't seem like it, right? We got a little bit more information out of her. It doesn't seem like it, but of course, like, would you want to be associated? She barely wants to be associated with this dead person. And she has a voicemail from this dead person. So, and it was a number that she didn't know, even more of an indicator that uh, it she didn't, she didn't really know Saz. She didn't have any connection to her or she could be lying right or she could delete her number or you know she she blocked sas on a different number but sas still called it from a different number i don't know 
I don't know with that, you know, just trying to walk down the path of how it could be they were an item, but I just, I don't think that that was the case, but that still leaves an open question as to like, why the hell is Bev Mellon at the trampoline park? Like, how did how do you, how do you know, how does she know? How does she know it's the who does she have investigating? Right, like that's still a big question, and we need to find out. We need we definitely need to get an answer about why she was there. And I love Paul Rudd doing the Irish accent. I heard some people say Scottish. It's not Scottish. I don't know what kind of you know movies y'all be watching, accent training y'all have, but uh, it's completely Irish, and it's supposed to be kind of funny. And apparently, Paul Rudd wanted to redub his lines because. He actually did a movie with like where he did an Irish accent or or it was like in Ireland or something. And uh, he, he he was like, no, I know. I know where I messed up. I want to come back. And they're like, bro, the movie, the, the show's going to release in like a few weeks. We, we, there's no way. There's no way we could do it. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of a little funny. No, I thought he was hilarious. If they would have cut it down by a scene or two, I wouldn't have been mad. It makes sense now that they, they bring him back in this episode, and I think he's going to be a reoccurring character going forward. As usual, thank you for all the comments. You guys are awesome. And look out again for the longer video that's going to have a lot more comments that I'm going to read. And I'll be able to go into a whole bunch of more interesting theories because y'all have a lot of ideas. And then it gets me start to rambling. And then when I start rambling, like I start I'm like, okay, yeah. So try to connect dots, even maybe if they don't need to be connected, but at least we can sort of play out how this could look uh, on the surface of the show. So just float me in all the rest of the comments that you guys have between now and the next few days. Um, and I'll read everything that's from this show, this one that's coming out right now. I'm going to read these comments. I'm going to read some from last week. And I'll just do a hodgepodge of it all. So, so yeah, appreciate the support. Appreciate the love as always. And as you know, it is that time of the show. Some, some it's some people's favorite time. It's some people's not favorite time. It's kind of it's one of my favorite times. I, I have a whole bunch of favorite times. All shows my favorite time, but because uh, I get to spend it with y'all, we just get to hang out and talk shit about the show. So it's great. But let's get right into our suspect board. All right, so this is a suspect board that we have left over from last week. Let's start it from top to bottom. We have Bev. We have the brother sisters. We still have um, old doctor lady, Dr. Maggie. We we are making some great progress because weren't these two still the most highly suspected suspects that we've ever suspected so far? For, we got another one coming up, but we're doing a great job if like they're already in our highly suspicious. And did you leave this episode thinking like it's still kind of highly suspicious? I do have a little bit of a problem with the brother sisters, at least one of them. I don't think it's Tawny, right? It still could be Trina. Uh, but I, I don't think Tom, the little shoe thing, it don't make no sense. Right. Like just, just freeze frame. Watch, watch it, watch it. I showed y'all, but like, watch it. The shoes just, the shoes just don't be shoeing, right? There's too much gappage from the footprint to the actual shoe. And I don't think the, the show would make a, an error like that right there. Their whole point is to give us clues, give us red herrings. This is a red herring. If they're giving us all the information, it's our job to put the pieces together that shoot this don't be shooing, right? And where is Tawny? I'm going to say this. If Tawny is shot, then obviously her, her sister's over there, so it's not her sister. Then that leaves Bev. That leaves, you know, we went through the list of suspects, so it leaves. It leaves anybody who wasn't over there. You're now a suspect of somebody that could have shot Tawny, right? If she was shot, if she was the one, if she wasn't, then she still could be a shooter. But I don't think that, I don't know. I still don't think the shoe be shooing, right? It's not Cinderella. The shoe don't fit, right? If the shoe don't fit, you must have quit. Somebody out there is like, oh no, he went there. <laughs> yes, I made an OJ reference. I'm still going to leave Bev up there. I'm still going to leave uh, the, the brother sisters up there. And we don't know nothing about Dr. Maggie. She may never come back. If I don't see her again, We'll start to we'll start to move her down, right? If I don't see her in another episode or two, we'll have to start to move her down because we're not going to see her again. But let's move on to our maybes because I think we can move. Oh, Marshall, we can move him to highly suspicious because it's interesting, right? Like he seemingly knows so much about the crew. He has now gotten insight to their board, to their knowledge. He's slowly maybe helping them figure out the case, thinking he'll never get caught. I mean, he would know, right? Like, he would know, like, hey, these guys have figured out three other cases, right? Like, he would know. And then also, 
that the comedy store, like the comedy place not being legit, like, again, it could be me looking too much into it. Or it could be the show's way of being like, all you have to do is look up and it's not a real place. So this guy wasn't doing a real set when he said he was. He could have been in New York, right? Who knows? I do want to say this, though. He's not my highly suspicious, but I'm also not going to be surprised if he's the one that shot. And if he's the one that shot, then we have a whole nother list of suspects. Bev Mellon's still in there. Do not let the fact that Bev Mellon put down a gun in front of our crew, do not let that wane you one way or another. Because wouldn't that be, like I said last week, wouldn't that be such like the show to be like, oh, she already held a gun up to the crew. She, it cannot be her. When again, she could be the mastermind. She, she didn't have to pull the trigger in the first place. So who would be working for her or who would she know, right? This is the que- These are the questions that we should be asking. But if Bev Mellon is shot, I'm going to highly suspect the writer did it, right? Like, I'm definitely going to suspect that because he could have known. It would have been on the board, right? Like, didn't they write down that piece of information? So he could be some sort of, like, low-key mastermind, but he's not working alone. But for all those reasons, I'm moving him on up. We haven't heard much from Loretta besides, you know, should I put down Jack Jonks? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all write in the comments if I should put down Jack. I guess if we see him in the next episode, I need to put him as a suspect. But until further notice, she's going to stay in maybe. Again, it still, it looks a little sus. You leave in town when, right when Saz dies and the mix of all of it, it just looks a little suspicious is all I'm saying, Loretta. You could have left another day or two later, you know? Let things calm down a little bit. No, you didn't. So it looks a little weird. What do we think about old Glenny Glenn, right? What do we think about old Glenny Glenn? Because he's it's it he's still gonna be a maybe for me. And here's why. I, I love I love the idea. You know, he brought him a little did, was it a sourdough bread? Is that what he <laughs> a soda bread? Is that what he called it? Uh <laughs> I think he brought he brought Charles a little sourdough bread. That's cute. He told Marshall he was like, Last when did you, when did you grow facial hair? Bro, he could have recognized him. Again, that's another reason why I moved up Marshall, right? He could have recognized Marshall without the facial hair because Marshall was in town. The only thing that makes Marshall Marshall is the facial hair. He could have had somebody else wear the facial hair. Holy shit. Even if the laugh thing is true, he definitely could have had somebody else wear the facial hair. Right? It's a prop. If somebody looks like him, he could have just given a material. Be like, hey, wear the facial hair and say that you're this person. He's not like a very wide known comedian. They're not going to, nobody in the audience is going to double check, you know? But also an hour long set, like, damn, bro, where are you? It's like, they don't be letting people do that. I have a friend. I have a very good friend named Ty Wynn. Everybody look him up. T-A-I-N-G-U-Y-E-N. Ty Wynn. One of my one of my favorite friends. And uh, I've had him on, not this podcast, but a different podcast. We still keep in contact. But when that guy started, and even nowadays, he doesn't do hour long bits. And he's like a, a headlining, a local and regional headlining comedian. He doesn't do hour long bits. Sometimes he'll do like 15 minute sets, 20 minute sets, 30 minute sets. Only when he's shooting for his specials, that's when he does hour long bits. So that's another reason that we should leave Marshall up there, right? Look at me, look at me figuring out things. But if Glenn recognized him, if Glenn recognized Marshall without the facial hair, oh boy, oh boy. My question is, are you the shooter? Are you the looter, right? Are you you the one sniping or are you the one grabbing the body? Which one are you doing? Which one are you doing, Marshall? Because now we know that now we know you're involved, right? For sure. But why? But baby, why? I don't know, man. It still don't make no unless he's fraud, unless he's all around fraud. And that's what Saz was trying to tell Bev. Yo, this fraud, he's about to sneak in and they're about to make this. Don't trust him, right? Man, it would. It's always the one that you least suspect. Man, that's another reason. So we're going to keep Glenn there because also Glenn is with our company of a, a few people that we see. That's on set, right? Taking a picture with Oliver, Zach Galifianakis and them. We know he's a, we know he's accounted for, but Marshall's not accounted for right now. So I should even, just for all those reasons, I should probably move Glenn down, but I don't want to because Loretta looks lonely in the maybe section. So, <laughs> all right, let's move on to our probably nots. We've got uh, Howard. We've got Zach Galifianakis. We've got Eva Longoria, we've got Anna, we've got Eugene Levy, we've got Zach, ba- uh, no, Steve, what's his name? Bacula, old Scott Bacula. 
Man, I said Zach Bakulet, man, I get my names all confused. We got Christmas homie. We got Pink Eye Joe. And then we got the other Sauce family members. Inez and Alfredo, I believe. Alfonso. And not, not Alfredo. Jesus, I'm confusing people. Here's what I want to do, though. I know Sherry's out there going to be yelling in the comments. Y'all look out for it. She's going to be yelling at me. But I just, for the sake, for the sake of, of the people that were missing and not missing, I'm just going to simply do this. If you were not present at the time of the shooting and on set, I'm automatically going to move you into maybe. So that means that we moved up Eva Longoria and Eugene Levy. And that's the only reason. I don't think they're really suspects. We just need to be fair to all parties involved of who we saw on set, who was not around right before we saw the, the fade to black, right? So where are they? And I think, again, uh, of them, Bev, Tawny, Marshall, Eva, Eugene, one of them could could have gotten shot, you know? That would suck. But, like, you know, they get shot, they don't die. Like, even if they do, like, I guess it's better than being a killer <laughs> on a TV show, playing yourself. But, like, yeah, I'm going to put them there. But I do think one of them, something happens to one of them in the next episode. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just have a feeling. And I also, too, I still want to move up. For no good reason, I just want to move up Anna. I know we don't have any, I know we don't have any proof. But I just kind of want to move her up. I don't really know. I don't. I don't know why she just she just strikes me like just hey hey move me up. But I'm gonna leave her there because we don't have any proof, and I'm gonna keep the board the rest of the same, right? And I even want to move down Howard to no way, but not yet, not yet, homie, not yet, not with them, not with them footprints out the way they are. Um, but yeah, that's what I got this week so far. So let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your suspect board looks like. Let me know who, where you're ranking people, you know? But yeah, that is our suspect board for this week. Again, definitely want to hear from you. Who do you have? What do you have? What kind of crazy theories do you have? Maybe based on something crazy that I said. Again, sometimes I'm just rambling, but I think sometimes it can sort of trigger, you know, trigger something and be like, oh, you know what? Maybe that's not all the way right. But if even if it's like 10% right, it could mean this whole other person is the killer or these two people are the killers. Uh, let me know what two people you think are the killers down in the comments. I want to know. I want to know your thoughts. I don't, I don't have a I don't have a two pick right now. If I had to, if if somebody gunned ahead, maybe we maybe want to do a two pick. I guess Marshall, maybe maybe one of the directors, not Tawny, but maybe Trina, Marshall, Trina, uh, Marshall, Anna, maybe one of the two. But you got to be strong. For, maybe is Marshall's. I don't know. Maybe. You know how sometimes people who got a lot of muscles, they be wearing like baggy clothes. Uh, did anybody see the acolyte? Don't watch it if you haven't seen it. But like as soon as the dude lost sleeves, he had all these muscles. And it's like, oh, that's what you hiding underneath there. So I don't know. Maybe. May maybe. Or, or get this. Could be a three piece, right? Could be a three piece. It could be Bev. It could be a director girl, Trina. And because we're still unaccounted for, for Rudy, the Christmas man, he could somehow be in on it. Oh my goodness. I guess if I had to pick a three piece, it would be them. Cause like that was sort of a, a little bit of, was it, was it maybe foreshadowing them having the doubles and then the double doubles? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, before I start rambling too much, that is it for this show. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me coming by, sharing your thoughts, blowing up this channel, uh, blowing up the comments, blowing up the likes. Thank y'all again so much. Maybe I'll just do it for that reason. I don't really know. But uh, <laughs> thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for, for all the love. I look forward to all of your comments. Again, I will be reading uh, as many as I can uh, on the next episode, and I'm going to be recording that in the next like day or two. No, not tomorrow. Maybe the next day or the next day after so it could come out by Saturday. That'll be that'll be the goal. Maybe I can if I can come out by Saturday, latest Sunday. Ooh, uh, that would be the goal. So let's get all your comments in on this video thread, and then uh, anything from last week too that I missed uh, that was super good. I will go ahead and read that as well. So look forward to hearing from you. You want to go ahead and follow the channel? You can follow us on X or on Instagram. Just type in Nerds at Night. You can follow me, Money Blake, whether Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. I love to hear from y'all. Just blow me up. Just be like, hey. Money, I got this. I got this theory. But if y'all have fun enough just commenting with me on the comments here, because y'all know reply back, that is absolutely great too. But yeah, until the meantime and until next week's episode, it has been a pleasure. So thank y'all so much for tuning in, whether it's morning, evening, afternoon. I always appreciate you. And until next week, I will see ya. Oh, that's a lie. I'll see y'all Saturday or Sunday. Peace.